What's up welders? In this video you're going to get examples of common mistakes that you make when you first start welding stainless steel square tube. This is 316 2 inch by 2 inch, 1 16th wall. It's exactly the same as the material I'm using in my bar table and stools project. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. I paid a lot of money to do a full-time welding course close to 20 years ago now. And paying all that money, I didn't skip these mistakes either. This applies to everyone, it just helps to see why you're getting the results you're getting so you can adjust your settings or your techniques. If it seems like this project is too hard with all the welding on the stainless steel, I can assure you it's a lot easier to polish out the welds like we'll be doing here than having Instagram perfect weld every time. Each welding machine can vary on the amperage indicated by the machine. Not by much, but there can be differences. As a guide for this 1.6mm or 1 16th wall thickness, I would recommend 40 amps with plus or minus 5 amps. This is a good ballpark to start with. In any project like this where the welds are getting polished out, a balance needs to be struck between strength and the minimisation of distortion. The shielding gas flow rates and cup sizes also play a part in the weld quality and appearance but I will keep things strictly to amperage for the simplicity. The gas flow rate is set to 20 cubic feet an hour or 9.5 litres a minute. I'll keep the cup size the same which is a size 8 and a stubby gas lens. Stainless steel square tube is folded and then welded together so there is generally one side that is a little different. Some manufacturers have the weld close to the corner like this one here and some have the seam in the middle of the face. That is the tube that is proud or sunken on the faces. The first example is ideal, the fit up is really good and the machine is set correctly at 42 amps. With the first weld I can weld vertical down with zero added filler wire and still get good penetration. Welding the outside edge limits the frame from moving at a square. And the face of this mitre is what you're after, zero misalignment between the two tubes and zero gaps. I am using 1 16th wire or 1.6mm on the seam and I use just over 3 inches or 80 millimeters. and the tungsten I'm using is 332nd or 2.4mm. This is the same welding technique I use for sanitary pipe. I move the wire out of the way and I'm looking at the pull's re reflectivity. I should see the tungsten crystal clear at that point I know that there's 100% penetration and I add enough wire to maintain the reinforcement of the weld. I don't want too much because I have to grind it away anyway. After each dab of the wire you'll notice I keep the filler wire in the shielding gas zone. This prevents the oxidisation of the red hot tip of the wire. Failing to do this after each dab you will notice bits floating around in the weld pool. This is contamination. Once you've finished welding, there'll be black dots at the edge of the weld. For the next example, Sparky is set at 25 amps. It's easy to think I'll have the welder set lower so I can get the hang of welding. When you start, you have a lot going on, feeding the wire, arc length and stuff, but the weld pool is taking too long to become the ideal size, and when I add the wire, it just drops a huge blob into the weld, cooling it down again. If I wait for the puddle to become the correct size, it will actually heat the tube up too much and it creates more distortion or sinking of the tube. Because it takes so long for the weld pool to reach the right temp, there is a large heat buildup in the material. Because of the decorative nature of this type of joint, a lot of the welds will be polished flat, so penetration is needed for strength. You can now see the weld as it looks like it's just sitting on top of the penetrant material. In this example I have the welder set at 65 amps. My travel speed is a lot faster to prevent from blowing a hole in the parent material. If I accidentally get caught up on the bench, or if I can't feed the wire through fast enough, the weld pull sinks. It also distorts the material. Being a decorative type of welding, you simply can't weld a brace onto the frame to keep it square. You can make a specialised welding table out of aluminium or MDF to avoid contamination and keep everything square. 
but what you can't stop in a jig is the parent material from sinking. On this type of project is the biggest concern. When a mitre joint is being polished, the flatter the joint, the easier and faster it is to polish. I get it, it happens, so how do you work around it? If you can, swap it out or turn it over so the visible face is better, but if you can't, I suggest using a larger diameter wire if you have any. If not, turn your machine down about 5 amps and put a lot more tax on. This will help it not to sink or ripple with the heat. I suggest using the lay wire technique. Place the wire into the gap and always have the wire in the weld pool. If you remove it or you don't feed the wire continuously, the arc will burn away at the edges, making the hole even bigger. I've changed position for this joint to make it easier. Next to close the gap up. Before welding, clean the tacks with a wire brush to remove any dark grey colouring and this will help getting the puddle established quicker. This will create more distortion though. When starting out TIG welding, you get most of your practice sharpening tungstens. But it's a complete waste of time welding once you've accidentally contaminated it from the wire or the weld pool. The stray arc will give a terrible and unpredictable weld pool. Overheating the job, and if you accidentally stick the tungsten in and it breaks off, and if you leave it in there, it can cause rust later on. A telltale sign of dirty tungsten is a brown looking haze beside the weld. If you look close at the side of the welds, you can see the contamination that I mentioned earlier. Here are the most common wire sizes. 045, 1 16th and 3 32nd, or 1.2, 1.6 and 2.4 mm. 045 is a bit small and cumbersome for someone learning. The wire flops around behind your hand and is hard to control. I find that cutting in half when I was learning helped a lot. Plus to complete the same weld I needed to feed 6.5 inches or 165 mil. When you are learning, feeding the wire is one of the hardest things to learn. Here I'm trying to simulate what it's like not to control the wire as if it's flopping around behind me. The wire is going in and out of the argon shielding zone. This will introduce oxides into the weld pool. For this type of welding it's not a huge deal, but what it means is the puddle will become unpredictable and it won't travel as nice. I am also struggling to feed enough wire in. Underfilling the joint is a huge problem. You might not notice until you've packed your welder away and you're 90% finished on your polishing job. Here is 332nd or 2.4 wire. This is too large for the material thickness. The welder is set at the optimum 42 amps for the material. As we've seen in the low amperage example, the welding wire cools the pool and creates large deposits of material. So the weld looks a lot like the cold example. Because I needed to re-establish the pool, it cooks the stainless, making it very grey. This is the correct grade of wire, just too thick for the material. You'll spend more time polishing the welds away. If you accidentally skip the step on checking if the tube's faces were flat, when you come to put it together you may notice this misalignment. For the welding everything is, is correct with 42 amps and the 1 16th wire and the correct travel speed. It's just the misalignment. You'll see in the end of the video how badly it affects the job. I find if you weld a tube with a proud or sunken face, any heat you add to it actually makes the problem even worse. Once you've, I've finished the weld, I'll have the camera low and you can actually see it sunk even further from when I started. Don't lie your TIG torch on the job. I found I used to grab the torch by the HF start and then tears would follow. First weld is ideal with its salmon colour and heat affected zone. The second is the hot with 65 amps cooked and it's sunken. Third is the small wire with the erratic feeding. Fourth is the 25 amps which is too cold and proud weld with lack of penetration. And the last one is the dirty tungsten. 
I ground the welds back quickly to show the faults. The first is the low amperage. Lack of fusion is evident already. It would crack if it was left like this. Second is the badly misaligned faces. It is sunken too far to polish out. That's a complete redo. The third is the hot example. Adding more wire will increase the sinking only more. And the last is the beginning of a nice mitre. If you've enjoyed the video and stuck around to the end, please hit the like button. It helps with the channel's growth. The Bar Table project will be up next. Thanks for watching.